Good evening, and I'm here with Coach uh, Ted Machulis, head coach of the Anoka uh, Tornadoes. Coach, you're coming into uh, game number four. Uh, you've got a conference uh, uh, opponent, the Osseo Oreos. What are you expecting tonight from them? Um, you know, I think that we're pretty similar teams. We always have a pretty good showing with Osseo. I think we're pretty equally matched year in and year out. I, I think we have similar type of teams, similar staffs, similar kids. You know, it's kind of one of those outings that we look forward to because it's one we, we look to compete in every year. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to a good game. We're uh, looking to turn a few things around tonight. So. Well, good, good. You know, last year, your first year last year as, as, as head coach, um, you didn't have any experience in goal. This year you've got both your goaltenders back. What has that meant to your team? That's huge. We've been really excited about the, that tandem coming back and, you know, being able to roll two experienced kids that, you know, we played every other game for the most part for an entire season as sophomores. And, you know, they got they got thrown to the wolves in that opening season. You know, I mean, that was baptism by fire. And, and I think that they came out of it and showed their resiliency. And as a result of it, we've got two veteran goaltenders that we feel equally confident right now, of, you know, whichever one we're going to put between the pipes. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a huge vote of confidence for us is knowing that we've got that experience in the nets. So Good. And uh, Lafferty's going tonight? Lafferty's going tonight, yep. So uh, uh, your offense uh, uh, needs a little jolt coming in. Uh, yeah. uh, a couple of uh, uh, um, shutouts. Uh, I know that you, you've got some good plans tonight. Who can we expect to see kind of on the offensive side? Boy, I hope I could. I wish I could just rattle those off. Um, <laughs> You know, coming back, our, our returning uh, point leader coming back is Trevor Lang, who's playing on that, that first starting line tonight. And, you know, he's a kid that we're looking for that has the ability to change the course of a game and find the back of the net. Um, we've got a good handful. We've got a couple other senior returning forwards. We've got a good handful of juniors. Uh, I, I think we're, I think we, we've got, uh, we've spread out the, the ability to put the puck in the net. We've just struggled to do it a little up to this point. So hopefully this tonight is a little shot in the arm, and I feel like once we, we break through that one, hopefully they, they start falling a little bit easier for us. But we just need a little confidence in finding the back of the net right now. So. Great. Well, Coach, good luck tonight uh, against the Orioles. Coming up next, it's the Orioles versus their Tornadoes. Uh, the puck drop is coming right now. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Goal, go to the Blake Yes. The yes. Huskies win their first state championship. Good evening and welcome to the home of the Tornadoes, the Anoka area, Serena, Steve Thompson, Jim Childs, and our great QCTV crew, and something's got to give tonight, <laughs> Ozio and Anoka, and Jim, you visited with both coaches, and... They expect a hard-fought battle tonight. Yeah, and both, both, um, as uh, Coach Machulis had mentioned, are both are similar. They're, they're, uh, you know, they've got uh, uh, some numbers that uh, are somewhat equal with. Uh, with, uh, you know, the amount of skaters they have. Uh, they both have good legal contenders. You know, last year, Osseo went from a two-win season to a, an 11-win season. Uh, they graduated some of uh, some scores, but they still have that culture there that I, that I think uh, uh, new coach, uh, not new coach, is his third year, Dave Prokrop, uh, he, he's set into, into, my, into place. And uh, we'll see tonight some good skating, some good offense, hopefully, and, uh, you know, that those goalies for Anoka, uh, really solid. Yeah, Lauren Laverty, uh, Laverty is starting tonight. 0-1 goals against 3.5 for you. Save percentage 8-8-4. That's a great story going into the game. And then Charlie Bergstrom on up to a solid start. 0-1, they've only played one game so far this year at Osseo. 4.78. Save percentage 8-33 tonight. At any level, it is all about the goaltending and how good your goaltending is on any given night. Yeah, and you know the one thing that uh, you know both these teams have is you know they've they've got a they, this is a chance to get a win. I, you, you know there there are some other programs out there that you go out there and you you're ho hopeful this is a legitimate chance to really get after someone that's somewhat equal in uh, in uh, abilities. And we're getting started a little late tonight. A wild finish <laughs> in the JV game, won by the Orioles six to two. But th there was a bit of a brawl at the end of that. <laughs> Um, th th there were a uh, couple of players kicked out of the game. 
and ultimately uh, the Orioles prevail in that one. So a little bad blood at the end of the JV game. Yeah, and uh, you know both uh, uh, there's some crossover from the varsity to the uh, to JV uh, as some skaters will play uh, you know a period or two tonight. So we'll see if that carries over. But yeah, that was uh, that was one of the high school brawls that uh, you don't necessarily see very often. Yeah, and you certainly don't want to see. And we're going to get the uh, starting lineups here for the game tonight. Once again, Anoka and Ozio getting started a little bit later than normal tonight. And you see the starting goaltender right there come out for the Ozio Orioles, and that's Charlie Bergstrom. And then on one defense, it'll be Will Engel, and the other will be Charlie Stockbridge. And then uh, we're going to get uh, the forwards. And uh, getting introduced, there's Jake Sawicki, the center, Eli Larson on the right wing, Ty Prokop on the left wing, and he is a captain. Sawicki is a captain as well for the Orioles. 0-1 out of the gate. As you can see, they'll be wearing black tonight. And there you see uh, Lauren Laverty being introduced, starting goalie tonight for the Anoka Tornadoes in this game tonight. And then on the blue line, you got one of the captains, Jackson Provancha. Uh, he is a senior, one goal, no assists. The other uh, player on the blue line, Mason Beaver, is senior, another captain wearing number three. And then up front tonight for the Tornadoes, it'll be Trevor Lang on the left wing, a captain, Alec Dalvang, a center, and Caden Sokup, the right wing. And we're going to take a break. We'll come back with the drop of the puck in a moment. Hi, I'm Jason Baumuck, and I'm the Parks and Streets Operations Manager here at the City of Andover. Uh, the City of Andover is a growing community, and the park and recreation play a vital role in the residents' quality of life and well-being. Resident volunteers serving on the Park and Recreation Commission have been an invaluable asset in growing our park system to over 67 uh, city parks, with 32 miles of trail connecting them all together. Most recently, the Commission has been responding to uh, residential development within the city by planning for neighborhood parks and advising the city council on re other related topics such as park improvements and recreation. The commission also promotes recreational programming within Andover's parks by working with uh, the youth athletic associations to provide excellent facilities for games, practices and tournaments and events such as hosting movies in the park. If you are interested in serving on the Park and Recreation Commission, please fill out an advisory commission application form available on the City of Andover website. Applicants should have an interest in public policies, a willingness to learn, and good problem solving and communication skills. Meetings are held the first and third Thursdays of every month at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers here at Andover City Hall. So feel free to stop into a Park and Recreation meeting to see what it's all about. There are the Orioles adding for the bench as we get ready to go. And the Tornadoes in white getting their gear on as we get going here on a Tuesday night. The Orioles drop their opener 5 4 to Dodge County down the road at Dodge County. And the Anoko Tornadoes 0 3 out of the gate. They lost to tight one 5 3 to the Irondale Knights here at Anoka. On the road at Maple Grove, tough night 9 0 Crimson. And then they played two rivers here at Anoka on Saturday and got beat 7-0. So I'd like to get off to a good start tonight. We are underway and the Tornadoes control D to D, Beaver and Provencia, and they send it into the zone. And that one is out of play. And here we go, right back to center ice. Prokop took the draw, now it's D to D, it's Engel. Engel slides it up the boards, dumped in, giving chase there as Prokop swings all the way around, and it's Sokup for the Tornadoes trying to get out of the zone, and they shovel it out to center ice. Grabbed there by Lang. Lang's going to chip it in, and the Orioles grab it. Puck comes to the near boards. Sokup after it, goes around the net, centering pass, block pack into the corner, out to the point, Beaver with it. Can't hold it in. And now here come the Orioles out of the zone. That was Sawicki. 
chasing it. Ty Prokop, one of the captains. And now it's dumped in, and the Orioles will go for a change. Minute into period number one. And the Tornado's trying to get it out of their zone. And the Orioles ultimately chip it right back in. They get it to center ice. Now the Orioles are going to reorganize and send it right back the other way. That was Tate Brink. They sent it in. Battle in the corner fighting it forward is Cedar Strand. Will Cedar Strand for the Tornadoes. They try and skate it out and chip it right back to center. Puck comes over to the near side. That was Kranz, Brendan Kranz, and it was deflected right back in. Out of his cage, Bergstrom tees it up. Going after it, there was Bennett Prokop. He couldn't get it out. Orioles batting at it, and then they swing it out to center, send it all the way down. They're going to wave off the icing call. Bit of a surprise there as the Tornadoes go in after it. That was Luke Folstrom. And now the Tornadoes send it out to center. Good pass to the middle by Folstrom. Then it went off a stick, and they'll go right back at it. Into the zone, Machulis. Teddy Machulis versus Dad, the head coach, Ted. That's how they keep it straight. Ted's a dad. Ted. That goes in on the goalie, saved by Bergstrom. Orioles trying to get it out, held in by the Tornadoes. That was Nedlin going headlong to keep it in. And that one will be an icing. We'll that, go to the other end. Yeah, nice shot. Nedlin put a little wrister that went through traffic, kind of surprised uh, uh, Bergstrom. And uh, for the first shot of the night, both teams having a difficult time just gaining the, the possession in the uh, in the zone, but hard skating and good forechecking by both. Reese Runyon took the draw for the Orioles, and it ultimately deflects out to center ice. Here comes Ozio. Then a big collision at the blue line. Getting decked over there was Mikey Miller. Miller went down hard. And now the Tornadoes control in their own end. And they send it all the way across. Rink wide pass, tipped ahead. And now the chase is on, going in there for the Tornadoes, but a little late. Charlie Jensen, and we go to the other end and get a draw to the right of the Anoka goaltender. Yeah, big hit. I think that was Charlie Jensen, the sophomore. Who decided to tattoo one of the Oreos against the uh, boards over there. It comes into a dangerous area, batted away by Lafferty. Lauren Lafferty is starting goalie tonight for the Anoka Tornado boys team. The heads up play there. Battle behind the net. The Tornadoes are going to skate it out. Trying to get it out of there was Dalvang, and then they finally get it to center where it's retrieved by Brink. Brink lost the handle. Comes onto the stick of Eli Larson. He'll send it into the far corner. And the Tornadoes swing it around the board. Larson right there in the corner. Centering pass. Big save. Big save there by Lafferty. And she ties it up. Boy, there was a player right on the doorstep. I think it was Sawicki, and she made a spectacular save. And she stood her ground, too. Rebound yep. came out right to Sawicki, and Sawicki was hammering it in. And like you said, what a great save by Lafferty. She's able to freeze it. That is tremendous strength for her to hold her ground yeah. and keep it scoreless. Three and a half into the period. And the puck paddled around at center ice. Tornadoes couldn't carry it into the zone. That may be offside. They're, they're going to allow it, but the Orioles pick it up. They're going to send it across on the near side, trying to skate it out of there. Laborde, Harry Laborde, can't dump it in. We're still at neutral ice. And now gaining control is Hillstrom. Hillstrom sends it into the corner. Over there is Bennett Prokop. But the Tornadoes come back the other way, out of their own end. And with a head of steam, this is Caden Sokup sends it toward the net. That hit a leg. And now the Orioles trying to get it out. Both teams skating pretty well. No, no team really able to get organized in the zone. That one tipped through the middle. Cedar Strand was right in front of the goaltender, Bergstrom. Orioles trying to skate it out of there. Boy, that was a dangerous move by Prokop trying to get it out of there. And now it's picked up by the Orioles and then losing right off the stick was 
Cheska. Cheska had it go off his stick. Gavin Cheska wearing number 17. Now it's pinned in behind the net. Two players aside, and we got a penalty. That's going to be a checking from behind every time. Arm in the air. Orioles trying to get organized in their own end. Delayed penalty coming up. Goalie heads <laughs> for the net. There's almost a tangle up there. Orioles still in their own end. Send it all the way across. They are six on five. Delayed penalty. And I think the officials are might get a little tired here at some point. It's like, come on, Tornadoes, touch the puck. Orioles still have it moving ahead. Ty Prokop into the zone right circle. Goes in behind the net, still has possession. And then that comes off the moorings. And we're going to get a penalty on the Anoka Tornadoes. You see right here, checking right. It, oh, man, that's a, a dangerous play. Yeah, very dangerous. As uh, Cedarstrom, Cedarstrom uh, takes the penalty. Time of that penalty, 5:28. I love the patience that uh, the Aussie Oreos did to, to to create that offensive opportunity. Uh, lots of times, you know, you rush things, and uh, they were able to slow it down, get a, get an opportunity in their zone. Here comes that Orioles power play. Brendan Kranz on the near side sends it over. Cran's out on top. Now they go into the near corner. Picking it up there is Cheska. Now it's Cran's in the middle all the way in, and that's tipped all the way through. I don't know who got a stick on it. We'll find out for sure. But it's a power play goal I think for the a, Orioles. I believe that was uh, Ty Prokop. Yep, look, looks like Prokop's going to make it to the bench first in line. Well, they had one in the high slot. Uh, Prokop was in the high slot. Nice shot here by Kranz. Kranz, and uh, right in there, there they had two, one in the low s slot as well, and just screened Lafferty. So it'll be yeah. an assist that will go to uh, Brendan Kranz. Yeah, Kranz was out on top, sent it through, and Prokop knocks it in. Now we're five on five, and it's knocked down there. Sawicki. Had it for a moment, and it goes into the corner, out to the point. Here's Kranz again. We'll get the announcement on the goal momentarily, but it is at 545 on the power play. A 1-0 Orioles. They're 0-1 out of the gate. Tornadoes have already played three. They're 0-3. Just great puck movement from the uh, from the Orioles on that uh, on that power play. No. Uh, We'll get the assist. We'll get the who the assists are, but really none, no touching by the uh, 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 tornadoes. So you called a pro cop from Crans 545 on the power play, and now tied up in the corner, and just an almost impossible save there for the goaltender for the Tornadoes, Lauren Lafferty. That one tipped. That goes well wide. Anoka trying to get it out of the zone. Orioles putting on some heat here in period number one. And finally, they're going to barely get it out of the zone. That was Charlie Jensen finally getting it out. And it comes back to the Tornado blue line. Batted away there at the last minute from Bennett Prokop for the Orioles. He was charging in. Cheska after it. And now Anoka gathers it in behind their own net. Pretty good forecheck by the Orioles, Jim. Yeah, there's uh, energy. You, after that goal, there's just a, a whole lot of energy on the uh, Orioles side right now. They're going to send it all the way down, wave off the ice. Under 10 to go, period number one. That one high in the air, almost up into the Raptors. And now it's Stockbridge. And now they send it across. That was Cheska sending it in. And now Anoka tries to break it out. That's Machulis. Machulis, tough angle shot. That went off the glove there, the goaltender. Bergstrom. Machulis a charge. Got a shot away. Side of the net. Centering pass. Knocked down in traffic. That was Cedarstrom with an opportunity. Will Cedarstrand. There's a long shot. Blocked away there. That was a quick shot by Will Engel. Right back to neutral ice. Tornadoes chip it ahead from the right circle. Shot block, another shot. Going into the corner after it. There's a big collision. 
Low Cup got dumped, and I think we're going to get a first penalty of the game on the Orioles. And we'll see who skates to it. Looks like Berg. I think Berg's going to get the gate with 8.13 to go in the period. After an elbow. So we'll see if uh, if uh, fortunes can be reversed uh, as uh, the power play for the Orioles was successful about 30 seconds in. This one, an opportunity for the Tornadoes to tie it up here. Time of that penalty again, 8-13 out on the point. Quick shot, and that's bad at home. That was bad at home right on the doorstep by Will Cedarstrand. Shot from the point by Mason Beaver. Cedarstrand right there and knocks it home. We're tied at one. Power play goals. Yeah, I think so. I think they're going to give Silkup the goal. I think he, uh, I don't know if it was actually touched. I think it might have gone off a skate. We'll see. Let's yeah. see right here. Let's see it. There's Cedarstrand oh. right there. Yeah, it looks like he did get the. We'll, we'll see. Here's a great angle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it goes off the uh, the stick of the defenseman. So we'll get the official call momentarily. Nevertheless, 1-1. One, one. Orioles, Tornadoes, both power play goals. Yep. So they give it, they give it to Sue Cup. Uh, no assist given on that one, but. Yeah, and it, you know, from this angle, it looked like Cedar Strand had batted at home, but it actually went off an Oriole stick. So Cedar Strand first of the year on the power play, and we are tied at one. 7.45 to go. Here's a shot from outside. Glove there by Lafferty. That was a quick shot and a quick glove. You know, Lafferty with, uh, you think about it, they, they've got a, the girls te team has an excellent, you can see this glove right here from Lafferty. Two excellent goalies. They've got Lafferty. I, the, amount of, uh, in, the amount of goalies that are coming out of the youth program here is, is pretty incredible. Good four check put on here by Jessica. Orioles retreating their own end and go D to D. That's Angle. Sends it across off the stick of Hillstrom. Hillstrom carries it ahead, right circle. Nice feed, pass, pad, save by the goaltender Laff Lafferty. Lafferty got that pad down just in time. We're still tied. As it looked right out front, and that one, really nice job just to try to get it on and see if you can uh, create some kind of rebound. Nice job by the Orioles. Bennett Prokop taking the draw for the Orioles. Puck goes over to the far wall, held in by Stockbridge, and it chips out to center ice. That's Will Engel right back in, but the Tornadoes go D to D in their own end, send it all the way across. Tipped in, they'll give Chase. Seven to go in the period. Centering pass, blocked out to the near point. That one tipped wide. <laughs> Big collision, we'll get another penalty. And that's gonna go on the tornado, so right back to the box. Both teams have given up power play goals, and we got an elbowing call coming up on Anoka's Teddy Machulis. Yeah, it even, Oof. oh yeah, it lifts up. And he might have taken the worst of it as he went face throwers into the boards. But, uh, yeah, good call by, by the officials. And when the elbow comes up, that's uh, going to be a penalty called every time. So both teams one for one on the power play. And we go to the other end. And here comes the Osseo Orioles. Jessica took the draw. They get it out to the point. Here's Kranz. Kranz had an assist on that first goal for the Orioles. They send it all the way across. Jessica in on that. And a save there. Lafferty went down, pounced on the puck. We got pushing, shoving. Yeah. Well, we get more penalties. The carryover from the end of the JV game. And we are going to get an Anoka penalty. And that's going to go on Anoka's Mason Beaver, one of the captains. So now it's five on three for the Orioles. Yeah, we'll see if there's any given to uh, Aussie. It doesn't look like it right now. No. But we'll 
We'll see it up front. Really nice, uh, quick shot again uh, by Kranz, who had the assist in the first one. Terrific rebound yep. control there yeah, by and Lauren Lamperty. It almost looks like uh, um, uh, Sawicki just kind of lost his skate, or lost his edge. and So five on three. All right, it is a double minor, a four-minute penalty there. That pass goes over into the corner. 1-1, one, one, five on three for the Orioles for the next 135. And then a double minor. I sent it in front, but that was a good tip opportunity. That was so wiki out in front, gathered in by the Tornadoes, desperately trying to get it out. Prokop with it into the middle. Kranz, that's deflected into the corner. Bennett Prokop sends it across, one timer saved. That was Cheska wound it up. Still one to go on the five on three. Kranz again all the way through. Saved by Lafferty. Oh, she's stood in there. Still 1-1. One, one. Yeah, great cross pa cross ice pass. That one timer yeah. was big time. Uh, Krasky just, or Cheska just uh, let it go. It almost looked like it uh, kind of handcuffed him. Made it, it went hit on the heel of the stick. He still slid over, made the save, and now for the Orioles in the face-off circle, it'll be Berg. Berg's got a penalty on his resume tonight. <laughs> 58 to go in the five on three for the Orioles in behind the net. Noka hasn't been able to gather it in and pound it all the way down. They get it out to the point. Send it over. Here's Will Engel. Sends it right back across for Tate Brink. Brink into the slot down in the corner. Tough angle. And there in plenty of time was Lafferty. Another good save. She followed it all the way across and was square to the puck, Jim. Yeah. Good lateral movement. Krantz right here with a good one timer, and Lafferty had all angles covered. Still 40 to go on the five on three. Orioles right back at it. Left circle. Another one timer opportunity. Fan down by Cheska. Cheska in the right circle sends it across far side. They go down low, get it back out. There's one inside. Another save. Still batted around, still loose. And then batting at home with traffic in front from a very tough angle. And the Orioles take a 2-1 lead. Well, it looked like Lafferty made maybe the first save, maybe the second save. And then it's finally hammered home on a very tough angle. That's Cheska, I believe. Yeah, gets, gets Gavin Cheska. Yep. See where the assists are. It's on the ground. Yeah, and I can't believe that they They're didn't blow a dead there. And then it just hit her left elbow and went in. All right. 11.56 time of the goal. Another power play, but it's not over. Still 2.27 to go on the player advantage for the Orioles here. And all the goals so far, power play goals. And I think for the coaches between period, it's <laughs> guys, yeah, clean stay out it. of the box. Clean it up. Yeah. Here comes the Orioles again. Eli Larson got spun off the puck. And the Tornadoes get it to center ice. Fact, Orioles right back at it. Hillstrom in his own end. The That's Orioles, uh, um, the Orioles said when I were talking to Coach Prokop, he, he mentioned the fact that it, the, his first year they were last in penalties. They had the most amount of penalties. Last year they had changed it around where they were the third least penalized. And he said that's kind of one of those things that we keep, you know, skaters on the ice, we don't, we, we seem to, you know, have a better game when we're not uh, shorthanded. By the way, Cheska from Jake Sawicki at 11.56 on the power play. Still a man advantage for the Orioles for another 145, and they're fooling around in their own end. That's Engel. Good job by the Tornadoes. They get it at the blue line and send it right the other way. Jackson Provancha sent it all the way in. Player goes down. We'll get a penalty on the Orioles, and that, that just makes no sense. That that penalty right there on Austin Hillstrom for the Orioles. That, <laughs> Let's see. And wa watch it right here. I mean, you just yeah. You're on the power play, and mm -hmm. 
Uh, you've got you got a chance to really get that two goal lead and you get the stick your stick uh, you really uh, caught in the uh, skates kind of, uh, so now four on four and then a brief power play for Anoka quick shot and a save by Bergstrom that came into the slot area and quick shot there by Lang so Lang in a good spot Lang waiting for the draw. And now the Orioles control behind their own net. Four on four for the moment. Orioles chip it to center, send it all the way across. So Wiki, he got hit. Turning the other way, so cup. I think we have another, do we have another penalty to go into the box? Yeah. Yep, we got a trip going to uh, Pro Cop. I'm gonna run out of room here in the first <laughs> period. <laughs> And that penalty is going to go on Ty Prokop. So now Anoka four on three. And I'll have a five on three in 28 seconds, or 22, 32 seconds. Time of the penalty, 13-19. If you're scoring at home, Tornado's in their own end. Jackson Provence sent it across with a head of steam. Here's Lang. Lang into the right circle. Backhanded in on net. And it squirts to the near side. Anoka right back at it. Quick shot. That was Soka side of the net. And then it's covered up by the goaltender there, Bergstrom. A little extracurricular activity after that. 3-12 to go in the period. And for the moment, four on three, Anoka. Just pounded away, and, and uh, that's what you're, you have to do as Lang was trying to get to that. They try to send it out, held in, and then through the legs of the Tornadoes. That was Cam Mortensen over on the far point. Still time for Anoka, down two to one. All the goals so far on the power play. There's been a lot of that. Here in the game tonight. Loco holding the zone, four on three. Quick shot, hit traffic, and there's the goal. Game tie, rebound right onto the stick of Provence, and he buried it. Well, timing was great. Three seconds left in that first minute. He'll still be on another power play. But, uh, yeah, uh, and it looked like Bergstrom just couldn't move he couldn't get his uh his skates moved laterally as that uh, rebound just landed right there and i don't know if uh bergstrom was hurt on that or what but you can see right there he just catches an edge and can't get the coverage on the uh back door two two are a score all power play goals and now Anoka will continue five on four. And there's one on the doorstep batted wide. Came in on the goaltender Bergstrom. Here's one from outside batted around in front. Orioles are going to send it down. That was an opportunity for the Tornadoes. Beaver from the point. There it is. Oh, right on the doorstep just wide. And Anoka is still a man advantage for another 31. Let's see the goalie, Charlie Bergstrom. He dodged one there. Yes, he did. We're down in the corner. And the Orioles are going to chip it out, just trying to get the scoring on that goal. It was Provancha with the goal. Assist to Sokup. And Mortensen. So we've had a lot of penalties <laughs> and a lot of, we've had five on three, five on four. You name it. 
Anoka right back at it. Machulis, he yeah. took a penalty. Yeah, we got another one. We got another penalty wow. right now on a slash. And uh, and it's going to be Machulis again. Teddy Machulis to the box. That's his second of the period. Yeah, as he comes around, he skates around here, really a zero angle, and then he just slaps uh, the uh, the goalie's glove, Bergstrom's glove, and uh, immediately they threw him into the sin bin. So here, here we go late in the period. Now power play for the Orioles. Both teams have both goals <laughs> on power plays. You never know what you're going to see when you come to the nope. rank. Here's an opportunity for the Orioles. Kranz. Kranz out on top. They send it to the near side. Opportunity. Cheska. That goes all the way through. Knocked down in front. And the Tornadoes are going to send it all the way down. Out of his cage. Bergstrom. He'll tee it up. And it's Kranz, their first. One to go in the period. 2-2. Two -two. Orioles on the power play. Could carry over into the third. That's Bennett Prokop all the way around the net. Sends it out on top. Here's Kranz fanned on it. And the Orioles give one up there. And the Tornadoes bang it all the way down the ice. Yeah, Kranz just lost the handle on that. They've been successful with that on the point. Quick shot, save. Puck squirts into the corner. Another good save by Lauren Lafferty. <laughs> And now he got pushing and shoving and another penalty in the corner. Yeah, and that's, that's going against Nelka again. So that. And uh, Nedlin will go. Yeah, watch this. And he's just gets the elbow up. Nedlin to the box. That comes at 1637. So for 23 <laughs> seconds, the Orioles another five on three. Well, lots of penalties in this one. Cheska took the draw for the Orioles. And now Anoka's going to send it out around the wall. Can't quite get it out. Also failing to get it out of there was Dalvang for Anoka. Orioles hold it in the zone. One timer hit a skate from the near side. That was teed up by Cheska. He likes it. So Anoka gets out of it 2 2, but we'll start period number two with uh, 41 seconds of five on three for the Orioles, Jim. Yeah, and a uh, great chance for the Orioles to come out of the, uh, out of the dressing room and get after uh, you know a chance to get that lead back but uh, like you said power plays and special teams have been uh, on the menu tonight 10 penalties in the first period two goals aside as you want to know because stick around period number two coming up here on qc tv Did you know that QCTV has a YouTube channel? That's right, we're growing and we want you to grow with us. Hey, so please consider subscribing to QCTV on YouTube. Movie reviews, we got you covered. Video games, sports, yep, it's all there. Keep up with QCTV's biggest shows, segments, and important news updates on QCTV's YouTube channel. If you could, do us a favor. Drop a like and subscribe, and we would greatly appreciate it. We're here to serve you, and we will see you over on YouTube. Central Minnesota Cornhole. We're based out of uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. We've been putting this state tournament on for, this is our fifth year now, and this is, uh, 2023 is the biggest state tournament we've had. Yesterday we had 306 singles battling it out for a $1,500 prize for first, uh, split into several brackets. We pay out uh, 
way down in the field, so any competition level can come to the state tournament and uh, have a possible chance to win some money. And um, today we have 196 doubles teams, which is the best turnout we've ever had in the history of the Minnesota State Cornhole Tournament. Um, we, we there's 20 different, 20 plus cornhole groups throughout the state of Minnesota, and they all come together in October and we play multiple tournaments for two days and with teams and singles and uh, four man four person teams uh, for and, uh, just a chance to win some money have some fun and show off your skills there's a lot of talented cornhole players in the state of Minnesota and um, the competition level in the last few years has really grown and the interest in the sport a very inexpensive sport and a sport that any age um, any you know women men kids juniors anybody can play this game and compete at any level in this in this state so um, it's been a very good adventure for us we um, we put a lot of work into the state tournament. We have a lot of sponsors that uh, help us out. Uh, we have a title sponsor this year, Allstate Insurance, who uh, really provided a lot of uh, support for us, which helps us helps give our money back, the entry fees from the players, all back. We pay out 100% of the entry fees back to the players. But we want the players to enjoy this sport and come here and just have some fun. And the, the Minnesota Cornhole Groups are and the people that play are such a great group of people and really encourage other people to, to join the sport and play and have fun and enjoy themselves. Logan Sivak, I am the varsity girls head coach here at Anoka High School. You know, with this team, we have a fairly young team. We only have three seniors this year playing varsity. We're very junior heavy, and a lot of those juniors have been able to start since their freshman year, so they're bringing a lot of experience, and I think that experience that they're bringing uh, is just really something that's going to help our, our younger girls that got into the program this year develop. So we have a very close-knit group that I think just is really going to be able to trust and feed off each other as we get into the season. We had a couple of key seniors departure um, this year, but two of our highest scorers uh, are returning this season, which is awesome. And then we have a senior goalie this year. She's been able to start for the last two seasons, and she's really looking to make a big impact her senior year. And then we're lucky that we also have a junior goalie that can fill in for her as well that also plays stellar, and we're just feeling really good on the back end, and if we can put some pucks in the net with our returners, uh, we're feeling pretty confident about this year. So this year I'm so excited just to create a better bond with the teammates. It is my last season, so I'm just excited just to spend these times with them and kind of cherish every moment that I have with them and just kind of creating a good community around the locker room and the team. I'm hoping to leave the team with just a bunch of good energy and knowing that I'll be watching them next year, just kind of keeping the motivation going throughout the season. And then just kind of keeping the love for the game. It does get hard throughout the winter, but just trying to keep up the good energy going. I think a personal goal of mine was just trying to be a good role model for the teammates, especially for the freshmen coming up. I want them to know that they have a person to look, look towards to and yeah. most excited to just see how things kind of progress from last year. So uh, last season in our first section game, we went into six overtimes, which was just a crazy game in itself. Uh, but I think just the way that we finished out that year and everything that we put into it, uh, you can kind of just feel a different buzz this year with the girls kind of feeling like, you know, after that, they just are really able to compete and ready to go. Um, I think that they feel like there's some unfinished business, and so they're really excited to get things going this year.
Champlin Lifetime has been a staple in the community for over 20 years. It's so much more than just a fitness club, it's an experience. Whether you're into cardio, weightlifting, or maybe you just need a relaxing spa day in the sauna, followed by a delicious smoothie in the Life Cafe. Champlin Lifetime has you covered. You know, what I see a lot from our Champlin members is that they're really excited about, you know, the variety of things that they can do inside the club. Oh, did I mention the new pickleball courts? Because obviously pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the world right now. We want to bring amenities and programs to our clubs and we added three pickleball courts in there so we can have a better pickleball program for our Champlin residents around here. Obviously we have what's called open play time. This is where you sign up, you go to the court and it's just like playing pickup basketball or pickup pickleball that you do at, at, a, at a park in the area here. For people who've never played pickleball before, we also have introduction to pickleball classes, right? So you can learn the rules, learn the scoring, learn how to hit the ball, the different types of shots that you can hit with our pickleball pro Brad, who's an amazing coach. So I'd recommend anybody checking that out. We have leagues available for our members. We have clinics, we have one-on-one -on -one lessons. So all of this is open to all of our members, right? And to do that, to, to know what the pickleball schedule is, what's going on, when it's going on, download the Lifetime app and log in, go to the pickleball portion of the app and you can schedule time to be in the pickleball course. So now whether it's free or fee-based, you do need to have a reservation because to preserve the experience out there, we can only have so many people out there at a time. When you talk on the fitness floor, obviously we have state-of-the-art equipment, we have swimming by the pool here, lap swim. We also have basketball, we also have a basketball court that for families, right, we have our child center. We have what's called Parents' Night Out. So it's a couple Saturdays a month where you can drop your kids off in the evening and you and your spouse or whoever can go, go grab dinner, go to a movie, go grocery shopping, just get some time away from the kids, right? As a father of three, I can appreciate that as well. We offer birthday parties. If you want to have your birthday party here, we have pool parties or gym parties that you can get involved with. And we also have Family Swim. You know, it's getting to be cold out here in Minnesota. Bring your kids up here and you can do Family Swim as a, as a family and have a great time there. You know, if you're watching this and you want to see what it's all about, I recommend come on down to the club, right? We do tours all day long. You can sign up online, you can sign up in club. There's no pressure, right? Come check it out, see what you think, and you know, we'll answer any questions you have, and hopefully you'll, you'll love it and have a great experience here. And with the cold season approaching, now is the perfect time to sign up or return. Champlin Lifetime has some very exciting new upgrades on the way. Hi, I'm Jason Baumuck, and I'm the Parks and Streets Operations Manager here at the City of Andover. Uh, the City of Andover is a growing community, and the park and recreation play a vital role in the residents' quality of life and well-being. Resident volunteers serving on the Park and Recreation Commission have been an invaluable asset in growing our park system to over 67 uh, city parks, with 32 miles of trail connecting them all together. Most recently, the Commission has been responding to uh, residential development within the city by planning for neighborhood parks and advising the city council on re other related topics such as park improvements and recreation. The commission also promotes recreational programming within Andover's parks by working with uh, the youth athletic associations to provide excellent facilities for games, practices and tournaments and events such as hosting movies in the park. If you are interested in serving on the Park and Recreation Commission, please fill out an advisory commission application form available on the City of Andover website. Applicants should have an interest in public policies, a willingness to learn, and good problem solving and communication skills. Meetings are held the first and third Thursdays of every month at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers here at Andover City Hall. So feel free to stop into a Park and Recreation meeting to see what it's all about. The Rum River Tunnel right next to City Hall is getting a new design and everyone in the community is invited to leave their mark. 
the city of Anoka received a grant from the Metro Regional Arts Council to bring community art back to the city. Local artists assembled to organize, collaborate, and brainstorm ways to get the community involved to lend a hand with this great project. So now every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. is the set time for the community mural painting right next door to the Rockin' on the Run concert series in Riverfront Memorial Park. I met up with two of the artists involved to learn more about this great effort to revise the And we are back here at the Anoka area Serena boys hockey tonight. One period in the books and we are tied at two all power play goals. As you might expect, a lot of penalties in this first period, and we get started here. The Orioles in black, the Tornadoes in white here on home ice. And first goal of the game, uh, Pro Cop at 545 on the power play. And then the uh, the Tornadoes answered back yep. with a power player of their own as Caden uh, uh, Sokup got the uh, goal, and then another Goal, so cup assists on it, but yeah, uh, Provence should batted that yep. one in. And then we're heading to the second period. Lots of penalties. They Ten. were busy. Yes, yes. The refs were. were busy. Yeah, they had to probably change out uh, the whistle, their whistles. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they uh, lots of stoppages, and uh, uh, with that, uh, the Orioles are going to start with a five on three. Yeah, a ton of penalties in that first period. Eight total in that first period. Five for Anoka, three for Osseo. I had it wrong. It felt like 10. Yeah. But there were only eight penalties in that first period. We'll start number two with a big five on three, as you mentioned. And it, we, we had it all. We had five on threes both yep. ways. We had five on fours. We had a little <laughs> bit of even strength time. Not much, not yeah. much. So And hey, by the way, shots. Are uh, 15 to 8 in favor of the uh, of the Aussie Oreos. So hey, let's take a quick look at our rankings coming into t tonight for Class 2A. Minnetonka, that is a machine down there in the late conference. They seem to be winning by a touchdown just about every game. You see their Northwest Suburban is represented by Rogers, uh, Maple Grove, and uh, Andover's just out of there. They've got a two and two record. Uh, they've got some big wins, including a big win against Chanhassen earlier this year. Yeah, and I find it hard to believe with th those top three out of the lake that anyone's going to run the table and get to the state tournament unbeaten. Hey, uh, it, it's just that that is pretty tough night in and night out to, to hold serve all the way into March. But yeah, here we go again. And I, we're getting ready to start period number two. I completely think that Minnetonka has the ability to go undefeated. They are that good. Here's Lang with the draw, but the Orioles control, and they'll get it into the zone. Pro Cup Sawicki. Larson out there at the point. It's Kranz. Kranz is shot in the goal. And just like that, another power play goal for the Orioles. And they lead it 3-2, to two, and that came 10 seconds into the period. Yeah, what a great rip right there. He just... Just skates in the circle, almost to the high slot, and then puts it right past Lafferty. Good goal and a new, on a lead. And another chance for another power play as they're now just skating one short five on four power play for the Orioles. Five power play goals in the game. Three for the Orioles, two for the Tornadoes. And the Orioles back to five on four hockey as they come in. Kranz had a steam, another shot. Kranz all over it. Brendan Kranz wearing the A, really feeling it, and why not? Here's Prokop all the way over to the far side, into the middle, picked off by the Tornadoes. And Anoka's going to come the other way. Sokup sent it ahead, and now it's Lang. Right back to center ice, over to the near side, and the Tornadoes are going to dump it in. Provencia, collision behind the net, but the Orioles have numbers stepping out in front. Good job. Feed in front goes awry. That was a terrific job by Caden Sokup. Orioles right back the other way, send it to the point. Held in there. That was Brink in toward the net. They try to wrap around, but that came up short. And now Anoka's going to send it out and down. Out of the net, Charlie Bergstrom, the goalie for the Orioles. 
right back the other way. We are five on five. Uncommon. Yes, it <laughs> has been unusual tonight. So far, no penalties in this period. See if we can go five on five for a while. And here come the Orioles the other way. Hillstrom. Hillstrom into the right circle. Nice drop. Rister. And that one almost trickled over the goal line. And it was batted out of there. Hillstrom sends it out. Here's Brink. Brink on the half wall bats it down behind. After it, Eli Larson. Larson has it again. They'll send it all the way around. Orioles can't hold it in. They'll go all the way down on that clean ice. And the Orioles pick it up in their own end. Engel sends it down. And that will be an icing call. 14-18 to go. Period number two, three, two Orioles. What a great opportunity. But I, th I think it was Folsom here. Yep. It was just able to get that out. And that thing was wiggling its way into the net. Great job by the... Yeah. Defense of the Anoka Tornadoes. Yeah, that was oh so close. Orioles control the draw, trying to get it out of there. In his own end, Laborde. And now they'll come the other way, send it ahead, tipped off the stick of Hillstrom, and giving chase down there. These Anoka numbers are impossible to read from certain angles. That one goes in on the net, and the goaltender Lafferty. It's white on white with a light maroon outline, just a nightmare, and you can see it on your camera. Numbers really hard to pick up, even here at the rink. I'm not sure who picked those <laughs> out, but it, it was definitely not a play-by-play -play or color commentator. <laughs> well, it's a, it was probably the same person that picked out the football uniforms, those white football uniforms that are difficult to see, too. Very cool looking, but they're difficult to, to see the numbers. We got a big collision. Ravko is down in the corner. Yeah, he's Hopefully, hurt. Yeah, he and he he got banged up. Yeah, big collision in the corner. Yeah, and the official is going to need some assistance over there. And the trainer is going to come out on the ice. 13:26 to go. Period number two. Three two Orioles. We have the ref down in the corner. Boy, I tell you what, the tempo of this period since uh, they came out and dropped that puck, it has been intense. We'll see right here. Oh, he just yeah, looks he like he caught an stick. edge. Yeah, and I, I, I think he actually oh, yeah, got he, hit by the stick yeah. of one player just going by completely inadvertent. He's not up yet. Or he is yep. up. He is up. Yep. So, yeah, and I, I think his knee locked up. Yeah, I think and that going by the stick, I think, hit him. You saw it in that yep. replay, and maybe that coupled with an edge, and the ref is going to skate it off. And I see he's going to. He has left. At, uh, he went through the. Yeah, he, he's, he's in the penalty box. He officially went down. Hmm. So they can they can do a two man team. I mean it's it, they do it for the JV. So it's not uh, it's there's some changes uh, you know they need to discuss the communication and and he's trying to stretch it out, but he he got hit right in the knee area by a stick inadvertently, and like I say, may have locked up or and well, on that draw the Orioles are going to control and get it out. Here comes Osio the other way. Dumping it in, giving chase, Kranz, key guy. Big collision in the boards behind there. That's Sawicki centering in front. Big save. Big save by Lafferty. Well, Kranz has been the best player out on the ice this so far this period, and it hasn't been close. He's been all over the place. And Kranz gets it at center ice, bats it up the board, and then taps it all the way down. It hit a couple of sticks. No icing on the play. And now the Tornadoes send it out. They'll chip it to center. Knocked down there. So Cup can't control, and it's sent right back in by the Orioles. 12.40 to go, period number two. Anoka in their own end, trying to get it out. 
They send it all the way across, rink wide. Here comes Anoka, Caden Sokup. Now over to the far side, Sokup all over the ice, bats it down into the corner, and now it's Lang, Lang. Sent it toward the front, nobody home, player fell down right in the slot area. That was Dalvang, and then that's steered up into the netting by Bergstrom. 12-14 to go, period number two. Well, the, a little a good puck possession by the Tornadoes there. A couple of nice shots looking for a rebound. That one went into the uh, into the netting, but keeping that pressure on Bergstrom will increase those chances. We are coming up on five minutes into the period. No penalties so far. Anoka in their own end. That's Machulis. And now it's grabbed there by Runyon. And we have an offside call. I haven't had a lot of that tonight. Nope, nope. Way more penalties than <laughs> offside calls. <laughs> yes. I think that's only the second time. I think uh, the first one was on Osseo as well in the Runyon. first period. Yeah, Runyon took the draw. He's getting some ice time. Stolen away by the Tornado as they carry it into the zone. Cedar Strand with it in the corner. And now it's batted out on the half wall. There's three players aside over there, and the Orioles try to get it out. Not so lucky. Cedarstrom right after it. Now the Tornadoes pick it up. That's Machulis. Trying to get it out to the point. Almost a trip, but no. And now it's Miller. Mikey Miller, now a chance for Anoka, but retreating his angle in his own end to grab it. Out there to help Laborde. Laborde skates around his own net. Up the wall to center ice, gathered in there by Cheska. That one whistled wide. Quick shot by Berg from the right side. Sticks all over, and now it comes to center ice. Giving chase, Cheska out of the near side angle. Angle in front of his own net, out to center ice, picked off by the Tornadoes. They'll send it in on that. Bergstrom will glove and give it up. Under 11 to go in the period, back the other way. Oh. Cheska offside. Out on the wing over there, it was Jackson, or Berg, and he was a step offside and knew it. Yeah, Cheska, what an awesome, excellent feed over to Berg on that, uh, that first uh, shot and Excellent save by Lafferty, but good opportunities, really good skating by both teams right now. Bill Strummer right in circle, quick shot, saved there by Lafferty. She's done a good job standing her ground here tonight. I mean, this has been a physical game. She's yeah. had a lot of people in the crease yep. area. Yeah, not only that, she's, she, she hasn't given up those really juicy rebounds. I mean, that one right there, we've got a couple of skaters bearing down, on it, including Bennett Prokop right, coming right up the center. Tornadoes along the wall, shovel it out to center. Orioles go D to D toward their own blue line and work it across. This is Cheska again. Cheska's active, gets a lot of ice time. Pinching in on that side was Brink. And now the Tornadoes back the other way. Here come the Tornadoes. They dump it into the firewall. Oka holds it in, quick wrist shot goes wide. Well wide of Bergstrom. And they dump it right back in and give chase. Going after it was Ben Carlson for the Tornadoes. Holding it in is Lang. Lang shovels it behind the net over to the far side. Sokup. Sokup tries to get it out in front, working with Lang. Lang tries to step out of there, right back in front. Batted away by the Orioles. Good job in front of their goaltender, Charlie Bergstrom. I'll send it down. That's going to be an icing call. Uh, Hillstrom was uh, shot out of a cannon, and they tried to thread the needle. And uh, just a little bit too far. One thing the Orioles, we're seeing the Orioles, and hopefully Anoka can take advantage of this. They, they're drifting. Or they're end up ending up uh, leaving some of that uh, that backside open. We'll see if, especially on five on fives, see if they can uh, have a chance to get it. We've Orioles in their own end. Stockbridge spins, loses it. Opportunity. Tornadoes. A goal in front. Big turnover. And Anoka gets the goal. I think that could have been Beaver. 
Yeah, great job with the stick handling and good forecheck. It is going to be. I think that's uh, Lang, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's going to be Lang. There, there was all sorts of traffic, and Lang is going to get the goal. Yeah, big turnover and, and three creates a three on one, and just a good forecheck right there. Grice pass way to give it up, selfless. Yeah, and nice Lang. job by Lang to put it down. And uh, we have our referee back on the ice. I'm going to goal. We got a penalty coming up too. 747, and uh, right out of that, a penalty. 3 3 the game. Score. And going to the box for the Orioles is going to be Harry Laborde. That Laborde, we'll see right here. He's going for a rough and just ends up almost punching him. And smaller, smaller statured skater. Can't time, lift those elbows. Time of the hands. penalty, yep. 7.53. Laborde to the box. Power play for Anoka. Once again, laying the goal a moment ago. Anoka at center ice on the power play. So, so Dalvang and Sukup get the assist on the Lang goal. That was a turnover. 3-3 three, three the game, midway through the game. Anoka, there's a shot, hit traffic out in front. That was a quick shot by Dalvang. Dalvang sends it out. Here's Beaver all the way in, saved by Bergstrom. Pushing, shoving. There's a late shove. That's going to yep. typically draw a penalty. Pleading your case there is uh, Bruner. Bruner came in and and he would he was the not the instigator. He was the second man in there. See right there, he pushed him out of the way, and then Bruner comes in and starts pushing. That could possibly end up in a penalty, and then of course. A good shove by the defenseman for. I wonder if the Rams just said we're sick and tired of calling penalties. Knock it <laughs> off, you guys. I think there. Uh, yeah, I think there's uh, probably <laughs> some good conversations with that. Coming up on a minute to go in the tornado power play on the point all the way in on Bergstrom wide open net glove by Bergstrom. Batted at on the near side pro cup. But it kind of fluttered on him and Bergstrom grabbed it. And still a long way to go in this power play for the Tornadoes. They're buzzing. Cedar Strand takes a draw. Quick shot. Lang lifted it over the top of the net. He had a pretty good look, but was in too tight. Lang over on the far boards. Lang trying to find room. Gets it out to the point. Lang works down low. Quick shot. Bergstrom made the save. Noka's still after it. Still over 30 to go. In this power play, there's a shot deflected over the top of the net. And now it's Boca batted in front, batted again, and covered up by Bergstrom. Cedar Strand had an opportunity, but didn't get all of it. You'll see it on the replay in a moment, but. That's a great pass by Sokup. Yeah. Right from behind, and you know, you keep get pucks deep and then able to flush it out. Here's. So Cap yeah. just couldn't get it to, couldn't get it going. Noka still on the power play in a tie game. Orioles led it three to two early in the period. Noka tied it up, and now it's dumped all the way down. And there's a battle after it. Just seconds remaining. Noka's probably not going to get a shot away with the man advantage, and that's it. We're five on five. Well, they weren't able to take advantage, but we are knotted at three with under seven to go in the period. In his own end, that's Provancha. Provancha gives chase after it. He's got company. Ty Prokop goes into the far corner for the Orioles, pinching in good job. Now that's Eli Larson after it for Osseo. Right back in there, Sawicki. He's fighting for it, comes out to the far point. Angle. Shot all the way through. 
They waved it off. Uh, they say it was covered. That, they, it was, <laughs> once the whistle goes, yep, forget yeah, about it. It's done. But that one squirted through under the pads, a Lafferty, but it is a no goal. You know, we saw in the first period where it well, they seemed, couldn't see it. Yeah, they couldn't see it. And this one. They waited too long yeah. and they couldn't see it. That ended up in a goal. This time they follow up with a quick whistle. Boy, I tell you, that was, that was a quick whistle. That, that puck yeah. hadn't stopped. So fortunate for the Tornadoes is that uh, went right back over to uh, to Bennett Prokop. Yeah, and he, he's thinking, I, I, wanted, I wanted the goal there. That would have been his second of the year. And now we're back at it, still 3-3. Three, three. Orioles hold the zone for a moment, but the Tornadoes gather it in, send it all the way around, and get it out to center ice. Hillstrom all the way in, puck loose, Tornadoes picked it up. They'll send it all the way down. That ends up on net. Bergstrom had to make the save. That's almost turned over. Gnocchi. Gnocchi had it land in his stick. And now the Orioles a little sloppy with the puck in their own end. Get it ahead to the Tornado blue line. Noka has it right back. And now it's shoveled ahead and giving chase there to Charlie Jensen. That's offside. Machulis put it in offside. We'll get a break. 5.37 to go. Period number two is still 3-3. I tell you what, Anoka has done a great job with skating. I think they're going to have six men. Actually, a penalty is going to go on Anoka for six men on the ice. Or for uh, too many men on the ice. So well, It'll be an Oriole power play. And I, and I think that Anoka game tying goal was even strength. It, it was. Oh, I was going okay. yeah. to bring that up. That, I, that, I'm uh, going to circle that one. We had five power play goals in a row in our first even strength goal. And going to the box at 11 23. Is Jensen. So another power play. Orioles have done well on their power play. They've had. A real solid execution plan, especially with uh, the puck movement. Boy, good forecheck there. Ned comes off. Big collision with the pipe. An aggressive forecheck by the Tornadoes. Machulis was in after it. And that, that was one that they didn't hold in at the line. And then Machulis really made him pay and learn a draw down in the Oriole end with 141 remaining in the man advantage. Uh, jumped to uh, Engel's stick. Here come the Orioles. Hillstrom around his own net, gives it up there. And now they're going to move it forward. Orioles to center ice. This is Engel. Engel sends it across a little too far. Orioles not particularly organized on this power play yet. 118 to go back to their own end. It's Engel. Sends it ahead. Right off the bench, Dalvang got it for a moment, trying to bat it forward. Runs into Engel, and now the Orioles have it. Moving forward, Berg drops it. That's Hillstrom. Hillstrom into the corner, sends it out to the point. Engel. They go all the way across rink wide. Quick shot off the glove. It probably would have gone wide. There's Eli Larson with a big shot. There's Engel's shot, sending it back out in front. Was Larson and will come all the way down. Still 34 to go on the Oriole man advantage as they retreat to their own end. Yeah, Teddy Machulis, that was an excellent shift on the PK for the uh, Tornadoes. Ty Prokop around the net. Out there with Bennett Prokop. Out to the point, works it down in the corner. Prokop's playing catch. They've probably done this on a <laughs> Outdoor rink a time or two. Big wrister up high. Knocked down. Kicked out of there. That went off the stick of Kranz. Usually out there 
middle point. And that one's knocked away. We're five on five, 327 to go in the period. Tornadoes, Dalvang goes into the corner. Two Orioles are there, and they'll come away with it. They'll move it forward. Cheska lost the handle, then tipped it into the glass, and will try and bat it forward. Going after it, Sawicki. Cheski has it back. Cheska around the corner. That one slapped well wide, and the Tornadoes grab it. Sokup moves forward. Under three to go in the period, but the Orioles have numbers back deep. Player goes down, no arm in the air. And they'll send it all the way down. They're going to wave it off. They're going to say Anoka probably could have got to it with Folstrom. Almost a big turnover in their own end. Carlson. And now Anoka right back. Folstrom carries it in. They're onside barely. And the Orioles send it back out to center ice. Berg will dump it in. Wide of the net. We play on. 2.25 to go. Period number two. Neither team's been able to establish zone time, Jim. No, you know, it, Anoka really has really outskated the Orioles this period. And here they come, dumping it in. Ben Carlson giving chase after it. Getting their first bird for the Orioles. Reverses course. It's picked up there by Miller. Miller swings around his own net. And will skate it up the boards. Good move. Gets to the red line, and then it's stolen away. Equally nice move by... Ganucky. And that's going to be an icing call on Anoka. Trying to send it a little too far down ice. 146 to go in the period. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, the, the Tornadoes were on. I mean, they were buzzing until that uh, that uh, bench miner kind of took the wind out of their sails. But if I'm, uh, if I'm scoring a, as a boxing card, I would say that... Uh, uh, the uh, Tornadoes have uh, a, a strong lead in this round. They went down 3-2 early in the period. That comes in on the goaltender and a save there by Lafferty. First period, eight penalties. This period, one aside. We do have one power play goal. That was the Orioles when they took a 3-2 lead. Ten seconds into the period. There's a battle behind the net for the Orioles. It's Pro Cup, and a Pro Cup back there fighting, battling for it. Now it's picked off. Tough angle shot. Grabbed by the Tornadoes and sent out of there. Well, Cheska sent it toward the net. The Orioles... We'll get a draw to the left of the Anoka goaltender. Yeah, ben Prokop has been on that forecheck, has just been a pest. He's in the back pocket of any of those uh, uh, defensemen that possess the puck. Type Prokop out there, wins a draw, and then batting it around, Sawicki. One to go in the period, we're tied at three. We were knotted at two after one. And now three all. That one well wide, still blocked away by the goaltender Lafferty. Orioles trying to get it set up, but Anoka's gonna win the battle of the puck, send it to center. Orioles come right back at it. Eli Larson fighting it for it. And now it's chipped ahead. Here's Lang. Quick shot. Pad save Bergstrom. He was anticipating that down low. And now a chance. Kranz a shot. Save there. Kranz has been really good. Yeah, he's had a good, he's had a really good period. Engel swings it around for the Orioles out to center ice. Five seconds remaining in the period. Held in the zone in the right circle. He's not going to get a shot off. That will do it. Well, the teams trade goals, trade penalties in this period. 3-3 three, three after two. Quite a battle here tonight. It is. It'll come down to who's got the legs in this in the uh, third period. But uh, really, uh, both uh, teams skating well right now. Yeah, and uh, we had a ref go down and bounce back yep. in this period as well. Stick around. Period number three coming up here on QCTV. 
point. That one tipped wide. <laughs> Big collision, we'll get another penalty. Well, the QCTV has a YouTube channel. That's right, we're growing and we want you to grow with us. Hey, so please consider subscribing to QCTV on YouTube. Movie reviews, we got you covered. Video games, sports, yep, it's all there. Keep up with QCTV's biggest shows, segments, and important news updates on QCTV's YouTube channel. If you could, do us a favor. Drop a like and subscribe, and we would greatly appreciate it. We're here to serve you, and we will see you over on YouTube. Minnesota Cornhole. We're based out of uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. We've been putting this state tournament on for, this is our fifth year now, and this is, uh, 2023 is the biggest state tournament we've had. Yesterday we had 306 singles battling it out for a $1,500 prize for first, uh, split into several brackets. We pay out uh, way down in the field so any competition level can come to the state tournament and uh, have a possible chance to win some money and um, today we have 196 doubles teams which is the best turtle we've ever had in the history of the Minnesota State Cornhole Tournament. Um, we, we There's 20 different 20 plus cornhole groups throughout the state of Minnesota and they all come together in October and we play multiple tournaments for two days and with teams and singles and uh, four man four person teams uh, for and, uh, just had a chance to win some money have some fun and show off your skills there's a lot of talented cornhole players in the state of Minnesota and um, the competition level in the last few years has really grown and in the interest in the sport a very inexpensive sport and a sport that any age um, any you know women men kids juniors anybody can play this game and compete at any level in this in this state so um, it's been a very good adventure for us we um, we put a lot of work into the state tournament. We have a lot of sponsors that uh, help us out. Uh, we have a title sponsor this year, Allstate Insurance, who uh, really provided a lot of uh, support for us, which helps us helps give our money back, the entry fees from the players, all back. We pay out 100% of the entry fees back to the players. And we want the players to enjoy this sport and come here and just have some fun. And the, the Minnesota Cornhole Group are, and the people that play are such a great group of people and really encourage other people to, to join the sport and play and have fun and enjoy themselves. Logan Sivak, I am the varsity girls head coach here at Anoka High School. You know, with this team, we have a fairly young team. We only have three seniors this year playing varsity. We're very junior heavy, and a lot of those juniors have been able to start since their freshman year, so they're bringing a lot of experience, and I think that experience that they're bringing uh, is just really something that's gonna help our, our younger girls that got into the program this year develop. So we have a very close-knit group that I think just is really gonna be able to trust and feed off each other as we get into the season. We had a couple of key seniors departure um, this year, but two of our highest scorers uh, are returning this season, which is awesome. And then we have a senior goalie this year. She's been able to start for the last two seasons, and she's really looking to make a big impact her senior year. And then we're lucky that we also have a junior goalie that can fill in for her as well, that also plays stellar, and we're just feeling really good on the back end, and if we can put some pucks in the net with our returners, uh, we're feeling pretty confident about this year. So this year I'm so excited just to create a better bond with the teammates. It is my last season, so I'm just excited just to spend these times with them and kind of cherish every moment that I have with them. 
and just kind of creating a good community around the locker room and the team. I'm hoping to leave the team with just a bunch of good energy and knowing that I'll be watching them next year, just kind of keeping the motivation going throughout the season and then just kind of keeping the love for the game. It does get hard throughout the winter, but just trying to keep up the good energy going. I think a personal goal of mine was just trying to be a good role model for the teammates, especially for the freshmen coming up. I want them to know that they have a person to look at look towards to and yeah. I'm most excited to just see how things kind of progress from last year. So uh, last season in our first section game, we went into six overtimes, which was just a crazy game in itself. Uh, but I think just the way that we finished out that year and everything that we put into it, uh, you can kind of just feel a different buzz this year with the girls kind of feeling like, you know, after that, they just are really able to compete and ready to go. Um, I think that they feel like there's some unfinished business and so they're really excited to get things going this year. Champlin Lifetime has been a staple in the community for over 20 years. It's so much more than just a fitness club, it's an experience. Whether you're into cardio, weightlifting, or maybe you just need a relaxing spa day in the sauna, followed by a delicious smoothie in the Life Cafe. Champlin Lifetime has you covered. You know, what I see a lot from our Champlin members is that they're really excited about, you know, the variety of things that they can do inside the club. Oh, did I mention the new pickleball courts? Because obviously pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the world right now. We want to bring amenities and programs to our clubs and we added three pickleball courts in there so we can have a better pickleball program for our Champlin residents around here. Obviously we have what's called open play time. This is where you sign up, you go to the court, and it's just like playing pickup basketball or pickup pickleball that you do at, at, a, at a park in the area here. For people who've never played pickleball before, we also have introduction to pickleball classes, right? So you can learn the rule, learn the scoring, learn how to hit the ball, the different types of shots that you can hit with our pickleball pro Brad, who's an amazing coach. So I'd recommend anybody checking that out. We have leagues available for our members. We have clinics, we have one-on-one -on -one lessons. So all of this is open to all of our members, right? And to do that, to, to know what the pickleball schedule is, what's going on, when it's going on, download the Lifetime app and log in, go to the pickleball portion of the app, and you can schedule time to be in the pickleball course. So now whether it's free or fee-based, you do need to have a reservation because to preserve the experience out there, we can only have so many people out there at a time. When you talk on the fitness floor, obviously we have state-of-the-art equipment. We have swimming by the pool here, lap swim. We also have basketball. We also have a basketball court that for families, right, we have our child center. We have what's called Parents Night Out. So it's a couple Saturdays a month where you can drop your kids off in the evening and you and your spouse or whoever can go Go grab dinner, go to a movie, go grocery shopping, just get some time away from the kids, right? As a father of three, I can appreciate that as well. We offer birthday parties. If you want to have your birthday party here, we have pool parties or gym parties that you can get involved with. And we also have family swim. You know, it's getting to be cold out here in Minnesota. Bring your kids up here and you can do family swim as a, as a family and have a great time there. You know, if you're watching this and you want to see what it's all about, I recommend come on down to the club, right? We do tours all day long. You can sign up online, you can sign up in club. There's no pressure, right? Come check it out, see what you think, and you know, we'll answer any questions you have, and hopefully you'll, you'll love it and have a great experience here. And with the cold season approaching, now is the perfect time to sign up or return. Champlin Lifetime has some very exciting new upgrades on the way. Hi, I'm Jason Baumuck, and I'm the Parks and Streets Operations Manager here at the City of Andover. 
Uh, the City of Andover is a growing community and the park and recreation play a vital role in the residents' quality of life and well-being. Resident volunteers serving on the Park and Recreation Commission have been an invaluable asset in growing our park system to over 67 uh, city parks with 32 miles of trail connecting them all together. Most recently, the Commission has been responding to uh, residential development within the city by planning for neighborhood parks and advising the City Council on re other related topics such as park improvements and recreation. The Commission also promotes recreational programming within Andover's parks by working with uh, the Youth Athletic Associations to provide excellent facilities for games, practices and tournaments, and events such as hosting movies in the park. If you are interested in serving on the Park and Recreation Commission, please fill out an Advisory Commission application form available on the City of Andover website. Applicants should have an interest in public policies, a willingness to learn, and good problem solving and communication skills. Meetings are held the first and third Thursdays of every month at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers here at Andover City Hall. So feel free to stop into a Park and Recreation meeting to see what it's all about. The Rum River Tunnel right next to City Hall is getting a new design and everyone in the community is invited to leave their mark. The City of Anoka received a grant from the Metro Regional Arts Council to bring community art back to the city. Local artists assembled to organize, collaborate, and brainstorm ways to get the community involved to lend a hand with this great project. So now every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. is the set time for the community mural painting right next door to the Rockin' on the Rum concert series in Riverfront Memorial Park. I met up with two of the artists involved to learn more about this great effort to revise the mural in Anoka. Yeah, good job. Kind of making it like a mix. Yeah, I try to mix it right on the wall. I work for Rum River Art Center, and I'm kind of the coordinator between us art. And welcome back, Anoka area, Serena. It is Thursday night hockey, Steve Thompson and Jim Childs. And we've had a wild one, three, three after two. And let's take a look at what's happened so far in this game. A lot of penalties, a lot of fireworks. And, and very evenly played game, Jim. Yeah, it, it certainly has. And, you know, the uh, goal, 10 seconds in as Krantz gets a pass from Ben Prokop, puts Got it away. Got a screen, too. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 very good. And Krantz was outstanding. Then a big turnover. And uh, uh, Ling puts it away. Uh, and really, they capital, they were, the, the Tornadoes were able to capitalize on on special teams and, and uh, get a turnover on the, that Goal called off towards the end of the yep. third quarter, or third quarter, end of the second period. I'm still in football. Yeah, Bennett Prokop, you know, probably got robbed of a goal there, but it is what it is. A little pushing and shoving. No penalties came yep. out of that. Just two penalties in the period. So we did have a lot of five on five time. Uh, nevertheless, 10 total penalties now in the game. Uh, scoring for Ozio Prokop in the first. Uh, Cheska. A goal in the first for the Orioles. Meanwhile, for Anoka, Sokup and Provencia with goals. 2-2 two -two after one. And then, as Jim mentioned, Kranz for Ozio. Ten seconds in. Our fifth straight power play goal to start the game. And then, of course, Lang off that turnover. An even strength goal. 3-3 three -three through two periods of play. And there you see uh, the coaches as we get ready. For period number three, and we've got three officials on the ice, which uh, was concerned when you oh, when you yeah. take one. We had one that go, went down with a with a knee. We figured one was going to get get uh, uh, have an injury from the shoulder because the amount of time their arm was up in the air. And instead, we had a, a knee and uh, didn't stiffen up. He's back on the ice, so we're full strength everywhere. And shots, where are we at, Jim? 13 to uh, thirteen for Anoka in that period, uh, and uh, 11 for Osseo, two-period two, two period total, 21 for the uh, uh, Tornadoes, 26 shots on goal for the Orioles. All right, so we are ready to go. Orioles in black, of course, orange numerals. Easy for an old guy to read. Anoka, white jerseys, white numerals, not so easy. 
And I promise I won't complain about that anymore tonight. <laughs> 17 minutes on the clock. We are underway. Fresh ice. Here come the tornadoes. It on the attack. Five on five to start the third. That was Dolvang out to the point. Beaver toward the net. Threw a screen all the way through. Right back out in front. And sent across. He had Lang right in front. And now it comes out to center. It skips over Beaver's stick. And here's a chance. That went over the top of the cage. That was Sawicki with a quick shot. Jake Sawicki had a good scoring opportunity. Frantic action early in this one. That's Eli Larson trying to work behind the net. Taken away by the Tornadoes. Lang's going to send it all the way across. And Ben a pro cup. He's going to get it to center, lose a handle, and then bat it in. He'll go for a change. They're going to wave off the ice. Minute into period number three, tied at three. Now over into the far corner, Machulis gives chase. Teddy Machulis. Teddy, a couple penalties in the first period for the Tornadoes. That one in behind the net, gathered in there by Angle. That comes off. It's happened a few times here tonight. It has. Machulis had an excellent penalty kill shift. It was out there for about a minute and 30 seconds and uh, just was able to disrupt that uh, uh, power play for the Oreos uh, for a couple of, uh, really, uh, about a minute and a half, really solid energy. Will Cedarstrand. Ready to take the draw for Anoka. And a pro comp for the Orioles. Still trying to get that set. All right. We are good to go. And a draw one by the Tornadoes, and they send it in. That was Folstrom. Right back to center ice. Trying to bat it forward is Machulis. And now the Orioles give chase. Here's Brendan Kranz. Had that goal to start period number two. Made it three to Orioles at the moment. And now Asio comes back to center. Send it across. Still in the neutral zone. And now getting it in, Henry Laborde, or tried to get it in. And it's right back the other way to Kranz in his own end. Sends it across. Picked off. And dumped right back in by Folstrom. Okay, in on the four check strong. They send it across. Folstrom sends it in well wide of the net over to the far boards. That was Cheska trying to hold it in. Cheska's had some moments in this game. One-timer opportunities. Does have a goal in the game. Second for the Orioles. Period number one. Long shot from center ice all the way in. Glove by the goalie. Charlie Bergstrom. And that one goes the other way, and that's Knocked down by Lauren Lamperty. She'll cover it up. Oh, what a turn of events. So the so Krantz or so Bergstrom saves it, drops it for Krantz. Could have held on to it. Would have been an off or a, 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 a zone uh, faceoff. Krantz puts it on net, saved, and uh, they get an offensive zone. So nice job by Krantz to get it on net. Drog comes all the way out to center ice, working in on the four check. Charlie Jensen, good job <laughs> disrupting there. Mortensen. In over the line, and Anoka has to retreat. Man, we've got a delayed offside. We had the puck touched on the delayed offside, so it'll come out of the blue line. I think both goalies have played pretty well. Yeah. I mean, they, they've had some tough chances, and no, no easy goals in this game either. I mean, it, Turnovers, screens, etc. Yeah, it's been it, it it's been a, uh, um, a really a hard fought game. The goals have been uh, some beautiful goals tonight. Yeah, I I think. Uh, now we got it. Yeah, we we got two players mixing it up at center ice, and I think going to the box is going to be Pender. That'll be penalty on Anoka. So Pender goes uh, goes off in another power play. 313, and the Orioles, three power, all their goals, power play goals. Right there. And it's kind of tied up, and then, oh, yeah. Yep. 
So Pro, uh, Coach Prokop had uh, their number two t uh, uh, penalty or power play out there last time. This is power play number one. Jessica, he likes to kind of wait for the one-timer in this right circle out on top. Crans all the way through. That was almost chipped, but it went all the way through. That was almost like the first goal they scored yeah. where Kranz was looking for Prokop, and he was able to tip it in. Kranz behind his own net. And then Kranz, junior, big kid, in over the line, gives it up. Cheska sends it across, and it is held in there somehow by Ty Prokop, and now picked off by Lang for the Tornadoes. He'll bat it all the way down. Good play. Under 13 to go in the game, coming up on one minute remaining in the aerial power play. Three, three games, sent across, catching it. Ty Prokop, right circle, heads in behind the net, head of steam, swings all the way around into the corner, gets it back. Playing catch over there with Bennett Prokop. Out on top, Kranz gets it there. And that's blocked out. Oh. How about that? Lang didn't even know it. One off his shin pads, he'll go for a change. Orioles right back at it, Cheska. Cheska, top of the right circle, sends it all the way across, down into the middle. That shot blocked down into the corner. Cheska after it, tries to send it out to the point stock bridge. He'll need to retreat out of the zone. And dump it out of play. There's a souvenir, not quite, but <laughs> you gotta give oh, those almost, back. Yes. <laughs> And, uh, at, at first, you're thinking, do I get to keep this? <laughs> no, you don't. Know. Uh, 12.06 so. to go, period number three. 19 seconds remaining. Noka's done a good job on the PK so far. Yeah, they, they have. and They did it on that last penalty with too many men on the ice. And this one, they've done a nice job disrupting it. Bergstrom out of his cage, tees it up. Orioles try and get it out of the zone. They're not going to get a shot off at the end of this. And then they end up icing it with one second remaining in the power play. 11.48 to go in this game. Uh, Anoka in, in, uh, has come out of the uh, this third period. They're skating hard. I mean, they, they have uh, uh, they have really outskated Osseo in this uh, second period, in this third period. Okay, coming in 0-3, 0-1 in conference play. Orioles' first conference game, they are 0-1. They've just played one game so far. They got some catching up to do. Here's a chance for Berg. Berg, tough angle shot, save Lafferty. Did a good job cutting down the angle there. But Berg had speed. Lafferty got to the near pipe. Here comes Anoka. Jensen lost it. Orioles get it out to center ice. A little pushing, a little shoving. And you got a hand pass. Yeah. Yeah, as uh, the Orioles, uh, it, it was almost like a jump ball <laughs> to Eli Larson. Tipped it to a, uh, a pal. Still a long way to go in this one. We're five on five. After a penalty-filled first period, things have quieted down a lot. Oak is going to dump it in. The laid offside called again. Kranz. Little collusion with the ref. Orioles in their own end. Tornadoes grab it at their own blue line. Go D to D. They try and move it forward. That was Beaver. They'll send it in, and that'll be an icing call. You know, we're getting, we're getting later in the in the period. We'll see if they shorten up the benches as uh, we get under 10, probably down to a five, five minutes. But love the energy that uh, this first line for Anoka had with Silk Up, Ling, and uh, and uh, Dahlbeg. They're out there right now. And player gets a heave ho. That was Dahlbeg kicked out of there. Out to the point. Crans all the way through. Stick save there by the goaltender, Lafferty. And it comes out of the zone. We'll go to the other end. Here's Bergstrom. <laughs> Turned it over. Side of the net. Boy, that 
Could have been goal number two for Lang. And now Stick batted yeah. away, and that's going to be a penalty on the Orioles for knocking the stick away. That'll be Gavin Cheska going to go to the box. And now a power play for Anoka. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, you can't. And uh, it was not uh, a good uh, And you see Berg, you saw right there, Bergstrom and Krantz. Yeah, look at this. So it comes in on Bergstrom, and then he just kind of. There's just a miscommunication between yeah. him and Krantz. Krantz went zigged, and he should have zagged. But now an Oka on the power play with 10-18 to go in the game. They set it up over on the far side. That's Beaver into the circle. Quick shot pad. Save Bergstrom. Got that right pad out on that quick shot by Sokup. And now the Orioles swing it around. Miller got it out. And now back to his own line. Provencia. Turned it over in the end. Now an opportunity for the Orioles. That's Ty Prokup in on the net. Blocked away by the goalie. Lafferty. Right back to center ice. Tornadoes try and move it forward. And they do. Jackson Provencia in. Out to the point. Lang sends it across. Long wrister goes well wide of the net. There's a shot in there by Beaver. That one goes through. So cup, good move. Throws it in front. Got caught up in some skates. And it's tied up there by the goalie Bergstrom. Boy, he kept an eye on that. That almost went off an Oriole skate into the net, Jim. Yeah, he's he's made a nice cu a couple of nice saves with Pad. That one right there, like you said, just keeps control of that rebound, able to get uh, to get the uh, face off on the far side. 9.23 to go in the third. Still a long way to go in the power play. Over 50 seconds. That's Dalvang over there. Gets it back on the wall. Dalvang shovels it back to the point. Mortensen. Then he has it taken away by the Orioles, and it's slapped down by Kranz. He plays a big role for this Orioles team, that's for sure. Uh, he sure does. Yeah, he, he's definitely a strong player, the junior. Brendan Kranz. Noka sends it in, gives chase, but the Orioles get there first. That's Stockbridge. And now it's carried forward. Runyon loses it. Tornado's in their own. Just 13 seconds remaining in the power play. They send it across too far. Orioles are going to golf it right back down. Big collision along the boards. And that's going to be Machulis again. I think he threw an elbow. Big hit on Runyon. Machulis to the box for the third time tonight. Will be four on four for a moment. Time of that penalty, 831. See right here, yeah, he just, just ran him. Uh, they're, they're just going to call that, especially yeah. along the boards. I mean, that. And they've been calling that the whole night as well. Yeah. They, I mean, it's just. They've been calling it tight and, and for good reason. Four out and four for a moment, then an Oriole power play. Cran's at the point. Big shot saved by Lafferty. And they're, they're going to rule that that was four on four, and the Anoka bench is saying, you know, that. that yeah, that, the penalty with, had expired. Yeah, the penalty had expired, but I think they're going to talk about that right now. The officials are yeah. near center ice talking about it. And Anoka's arguing, hey, you know, we, we were we were on the PK when we sent that down. Here's the Kranz drive, saved by Lafferty, and then sent down. And I would think at that moment it was yeah. Oriole power play. Nevertheless, we're back at it. Cheska in the right circle trying to get free. Good battle over there. Fighting Sokup. And are we going to get a penalty? I'm going to roughing call against uh, Cheska. Uh, Cheska, who and just Sokup came out. drew yeah. it. I mean, yeah. there, there, no doubt he forced that penalty. And back to the box for the second time in the period goes Cheska. Yeah, he he did throw a right on the top, trying to get through. Uh, it's well. 
four on Refereeing four. is not easy. Let's put it that way. Well, and the the thing is, you go back to the end of the JV game, yes. and and the bad blood at the end of the JV game kind of carried over, and and it's been rough. And there's no doubt. What you want to make sure nobody gets hurt. You yeah. know. Yep. Yep. And and that. And that's why, you know, they've tightened it up a ton. And here we go to the other end. Sawicki loses it at the line. Four on four for the next 130. So a little extra ice. Under eight to go in the game. Tied at three. Chance for the tornado. <laughs> Soak up a feed in front to Dalvang. And he fanned on it. Orioles try and get it out of the zone. And they eventually do. Here they come the other way. Tie broke up. And we've got another <laughs> penalty and interference call. Well, 7.40 to go. Now four on three for a moment. And going to the box for the Anoka Tornadoes, Provencia. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna have to get some additional seating built over there fairly soon. That comes at 9.20, and now we have a timeout on the ice. So, you know, bo both teams want to win this game. The Orioles coming in, as we mentioned, 0-1, Anoka 0-3. An opportunity here tonight mm -hmm. to get W number one and staying out of the box. That, that's got to be job one. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at some of the uh, the upcoming schedules for both teams. And Tornadoes, uh, uh, they've got uh, – Southwest, uh, um, Central, and uh, Richfield. That will be there on the 9th. And then uh, they're on the road to Centennial. Coon Rapids, a couple of tough mm. matches there. South St. Paul and Hastings on their, on their schedule. As far as the Osseo, this, that'll be a good one. Maple Grove against uh, the uh, Oreos. Uh, that's uh, about as close a rivalry as you can get as far as proximity. They've got uh, Spring Lake Park, Oatana, Northfield, and Irondale. So some solid uh, games up front. Both teams will be in winter tournaments coming up. The uh, uh, Anoka Tornadoes will be uh, going up to Duluth to the uh, Heritage uh, Hockey Classic up uh, in Duluth. And uh, Osseo will be just down the road at the Bill McGain Holiday Classic in Proctor. Have you been to the, uh, the Ice Arena in Proctor? I have the, not. The St. Luke's? It's beautiful. No. It's absolutely one of the... Uh, best arenas around. It's fairly new. It's a gr it's great viewing, great ice. It's uh, it's a it's an excellent venue. Yeah, Heritage in Duluth is a real gem, that's for sure. Yep. And that draw comes out to center. So here we stand, four on three, for the Orioles, for one minute. Cran sends it in. He'll go back into the corner and get it. Sends it out to the point. Now across. That's Sawicki. Sawicki crans on top. Didn't tee it up. Ty Prokop. There's a one-timer in on the goalie. Would have gone wide. Sawicki didn't get all of it. And it's covered up by the goaltender, Lauren Laverty. Well, this is their M.O. This is the Orioles' M.O. To get it, to look for those backdoor passes and cross ice and see if they can uh, find uh, some kind of hole. Here's Kranz. Gets it back in the middle. Sends it over to the near side, Sawicki. Sawicki into the right circle, now down low. Gets it back, fans in another shot. Tornadoes can't clear, hit a skate. <laughs> that shot by Sawicki again goes wide. Eli Larson out there for the Orioles. It's Kranz again on top. His shot all the way in, glove save by Lafferty. Good job by Lauren Lafferty. She saw, she saw it at the last minute, got the glove up. Yeah, she's had a really good couple of periods here. She That one, good lateral movement. And uh, stayed strong once that rebound came out. 14 seconds remaining in the four on three. Then it'll be four on four for about 30 seconds. And then the Orioles right back to a power play. They send it across. One timer and a goal. This time it paid off. Jake Sawicki. Bangs it home. Orioles lead it four to three on a power play. Well, that was an uh, excellent pass. They, they, they've done it all night long, getting those cross ice passes. This time, Zawicki had no problem. He got good wood on it. Nice one timer. 
Time of that goal, 10-25. Another power play goal for the Orioles. All four of their goals on the power play, and, and you, you would think that Ted Machulis would make a point of that in their next practice. Down four to three, four on four for the moment. Puck at center ice. And now the Tornadoes turn it the other way for a moment, but it's picked off. Will Engel did a good job. Sends it all the way across. Off a skate of Ty Prokop. And the Tornadoes bat it right back in. That was Parker Nedlin who batted it in. And now it's five on four. Orioles to the power play again. And that one lifted out. That hit a high stick. Yeah, it's going to go all the way down. So it'll just be like an icing and nine seconds left on that power play. Big Look hit right that. here. Nice hip thrown right in. Yeah, terrific. Let's see, who, see what, who, what the name of that truck was, but that was uh, a heavy hit. Kranz gets the assist. And Ty Prokop, the other assist on that goal. Make it 4-3 Orioles. 5.38 to go. Orioles two on one in front. Tip. And what a save. Bennett Prokop tipped it in on the goaltender. Lafferty. Now here's Kranz. That one tipped wide of the net. After it in the other corner, Bennett Prokop. Also over there for the Orioles. Hillstrom fighting for it. But Anoka's going to pick it up, and Ben Carlson turned it over in front. Saved by Lafferty, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> she's, <is> she, <laughs> she, she, she's kept Anoka in it here in this third period. Yeah, Hillstrom, and again, that was it. Look at this. Uh, yeah, right pass. off the leg. Yeah. And then the save, and she was in the right spot waiting for that shot. Yeah, good anticipation, good angle. And her team's taken a ton of penalties in front of her. There have been a lot of power play time tonight for the Orioles. Four power play goals. And now Lang tries to bat it away, and the Tornadoes pick it up. Lang gets it back. Center ice. He's going to skate in. He sends it to the front. Big collision in front. And a player goes down. That was Laborde with quite a hit. And now the Orioles get it back. Osio coming the other way. Ty Prokop in over the line, trailing the play. Sawicki, who had that go-ahead goal a moment ago, we're offside. So tonight's uh, scoring Prokop, uh, Ty Prokop, goal and two assists. Krantz, goal two assists. And also Caden Silkup, a goal and two assists. Draw controlled by the Orioles. They try to send it in, but it's still at neutral ice. Now finally back, backhanded in by Engel. Tornadoes grab it in their own end and skate it forward. They're trying to get ahead of steam. Going in, trying to get a shot off. Puck loose, side of the net. Player went down. That was Logan Pender that went down. No penalty call on the play. We're still five on five with 420 to go in the game. Well, both teams are over uh, 30 shots on goal, and both the goalies have, have really done a nice job. Let's take a look right here. Looks like the linesman took one right yeah. off, right off the face. Uh, not, uh, not good. Ouch. Noka battling, trying to hold the zone. Bruner over there in the corner, still fighting for it. Two tornadoes collide. And now right back to center ice. Coming up on four to go in the game. Good move there by Cheska. Cheska tried to dump it into the corner. Does get there. Goes all the way around the net. Continues to stick handle. Steps out of the corner. Walks in front. But blocking that pipe beautifully was Lafferty. And what Cheska was trying to do and... Made sure he didn't sneak it in that near post. Noka tries to bat it forward. They do, and it'll give Chase Bergstrom out of his net. Tees it up, coming around the other side. Stockbridge 
And he'll get it back and reverse course. No can on the fourth check. They got to gamble a little bit. And the Orioles are going to skate out of there. Stockbridge got pinned along the boards at the blue line. After it is Jensen. Jensen in the corner for the Tornadoes comes out of there. Works it out to center ice. Stolen away by the Orioles. Three to go in the game. Osio trying to even their record at one and one. Tornadoes trying to get their turnover. Player goes down. Big collision. Sawicki. Sends it in front. That tipped away. That was Ty Prokup with the quick shot. The Tornadoes send it all the way down with 2.37 to go. Well, they, they, they've shortened it to two lines, basically the first and second line for both teams uh, as we get here late in uh, the third period. Uh, Ty Prokop, I think, has been out there about 15 minutes, and we've played uh, only 14. He's been out there all the time. Ty Prokop taking the draw. Alec Dahlvang for the Tornadoes. 2.37 to go. Key draw. Uncle wants to get out of their own end. And now we have a change in there. Eli Larson had to step into the faceoff circle. Larson behind the net. Quick stop. Sends it all the <laughs> way around. Pinching in on the far side. Laborde. And we have a player go down for the Orioles. Yeah, it's Prokop. I don't I didn't see what happened. I don't know if he got. And inadvertent like got, high stick maybe in yeah. under the in under the mask. Like I say, I, I, I don't. I don't think it was a intentional high stick that caught him, but <laughs> looks like he good. He's got a smile on right here. Fifteen minor yeah. penalties. There it is. It just so we'll have a face off outside. It looks like he's uh, gonna stick around. Yeah, he's good to go. Been a pro cop. So Wiki out there, and the Orioles happy to dump it in. That was Kranz, good play. Got it over the red line, dumped it in. Give chase. They have a one-goal lead time on their side as we approach two to go. Here's Lang. He's dangerous. Lang into the middle of the ice, trying to get an alley. Sends it in just wide. Kept it on the ice, and it slid just wide of the net. To his side in the corner, fighting for it. Tornadoes come out of the corner with it. Trying to step to the front was Beaver. Or excuse me, Beaver out at the point. That may have got some iron. So Cup, he goes down all the way around. Beaver pinches in off the glove. Right back in the corner. So Cup fighting for it. And the Orioles will send it out. And all the way down with 129 to go in the game. Tornado's down by one. When do they get that goaltender Lafferty out of there to get the extra attack? Or we'll see about that. Everybody in on side. They send it to the net. Bergstrom a save. 116 to go, and this would be a great opportunity well, for a timeout. To get out. the extra attack, or yeah, you maybe you get a timeout and keep your keep your number one line out there. And they're going to keep Lauren Lafferty in the net with 116 to go. And now we're going to get that timeout. Well, right yeah. on cue, Jim. And then it, here, here's her upcoming schedule on QCTV. A lot of events. Our crew is busy. And we got girls' hoops coming up tomorrow night, Friday night. Cambridge Isani against Andover. Andover dropped a heartbreaker on Tuesday night to Eastview. That, that was quite a ball game. And then uh, boys' hoops, girls' hockey. Boys hockey as well on the schedule. I think that's you and I on Thursday. Steve, I uh, get Champlain Park versus Andover. That's going to be another good Northwest Suburban tussle. Yeah, look forward to it. Like I say, our crew very busy, led by Ryan Mush, doing a good job. And it, it, it is amazing. You get on the air, everything's calm. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the kind of that storm to get ready. <laughs> yes. They do an amazing job getting all the gears set up. We we just show up and talk. That's, yeah, put on the headset yeah. and take it off. Yeah, that's, that's it. A, that's uh, a They're doing joy. all the yep. real work, that's for sure. 
You Great job right. by our crew here tonight at an Oak Area Ice Arena. And we're just getting started this winter sports season. We've got some wrestling coming up later in the year. I know that's on the schedule. And, of course, plenty of boys and girls hoops. Boys and girls hockey this winter featuring an OK Andover and Champlin Park. Champlin Park, Coon Rapids. Girls hockey. So a big spot, 1-16 to go in the game. Draw coming to the left to the Orioles goaltender Bergstrom. And they did they did pull Lafferty now, so they've got yep. six skaters out there. And that uh, number one line is out there as well. Key guy is laying right behind the dot. Draw, stalemate. Orioles are going to send it out. They're going to take the ice and call. Now they're going to wave it off. Wow. In after it, Beaver. Beaver's going to skate it up. Send it ahead, and it's grabbed there by the Tornadoes. Bruner. Bruner loses it. Orioles send it out, hit a stick. They're going to say it was tipped. And Anoka back to their own end, 50 to go. Orioles in on the four check. Fighting for it is Hillstrom. He almost picked it off. Anoka trying to get it out of their own end and send it down. They're going to wave that off. 35 remaining in the game. Two aside fighting along the boards. Lang tries to send it in front. That's chipped out by the Orioles and down. And that will trickle over the end line, and that will be an icing call. And Anoka really needed that. They, they really did, and, and they need to win this faceoff and just get the puck possession and try to get some pucks on net and see if he can get a rebound. They do win the draw. Anoka sends it toward the net. Bergstrom the save. Anoka had a body there right in front, including Lang. Also getting to the front for the Tornadoes. Dalvang, 20 seconds to go. Another big draw here for both teams. They drop the puck. Orioles chip it off the boards and down. They will settle for the icing call again. Now 14 seconds remaining. That's actually a pretty good play. It's an excellent play. You're just trying to get down those last 14 ticks. And... Of course, uh, we knew this is going to be a nail biter once it started, right? Puck comes to the boards. Dalvang fighting for it. Orioles get it ahead. Empty net opportunity. Four seconds to center ice. Can the Tornadoes get a shot away? No. That will do it. Tied at two after one. Tied. At three after two, Orioles get the lone goal from Sawicki at 10.25 on the power play to escape with a 4-3 victory. They're now 1-1. One one. The Tornadoes fall to 0-4. Well, you, you know, Coach Machulis talked about this right at the beginning of our broadcast. These are two very equal teams, and, and uh, uh, both skated well, good, goal, good goalie. Uh, it's really special teams that, that uh, made the or had the Orioles come out on top with the four power play goals. Yeah, and Anoka probably to the box a little yeah. too much tonight. Yeah. yeah. You know, right. no doubt about it. And and they put their special teams, their PK, in a tough spot. Yeah, well, yeah, you just can't get anything going if you're constantly chasing that puck. So, uh, you know, Anoka will be uh, – they'll they're going to get some wins this year. And uh, this uh, Osseo team, boy, they just not a lot of quit with them either. Big thanks to our QC TV crew. Big thanks to the folks here at Anoka Area East Arena. Always so friendly. And, of course, always good to see you, Jim. A lot of fun well. here tonight. Good one. Uh, it was physical. And the Osseo Orioles go to 1-1 one one with a 4-3 win over the Anoka Tornadoes. Thanks so much for joining us, and good night. <laughs>